These are the things, no matter what, that I must have when I design a model railroad. And I thought to myself, they may help you out too. This video is brought to you with support from my patrons on Patreon. These videos would not be possible without them. And if you'd like to join the Patreon community, you can follow the link in the description below and join for as little as $1 a month. Before I begin, I will say that my design philosophy is to make a hybrid track plan where trains can do continuous running, but I must also be able to do switching operations as well. The absolute most important thing that I must have in a track plan, this is by far the most important thing, is a place for trains to enter and exit the layout. This can be anything from hidden staging to a simple spur off the side of your layout. Railroads do not exist in a closed environment and must have a way to connect to the outside world if you're planning on doing operations. The second is almost counterintuitive to the first. I need to have the ability for my trains to run continuously. A lot of times, I don't want to do a full-blown operation session. I just want to run trains. Having the ability to continuously run my model trains is something that is beyond important to my model railroading design. I really do genuinely enjoy just watching my trains run around the track. Okay, now we are going to get into the nitty gritty of railroad design. My third must have is some sort of runaround track. You can be creative on this, like when I use the continuous loop on MRR1 as the runaround track, or on the Twin Valley Railroad where I have a section of double track main that works as my runaround track with double crossovers at each end. This is crucial to my designs and the most designs of most model railroads. A runaround track allows for proper switching by allowing the locomotive to get in the proper position for spotting a car. You definitely want a runaround track if you are looking to do any type of switching. Next up, we're going to talk about some non-track plan related items. The first that I do not like and something that I try to do in my layout design is to not have the towns be the central focus of my layout. I usually want them to be off to one side or maybe barely represented in a corner. This is because typically what is interesting for a train to be doing is usually situated far away from a downtown district. Sure, you may have small warehouses and industries, but unless you're modeling a larger city, you're probably not going to see too much switch going on right in downtown. There are obvious exceptions. We have all seen the videos of the tracks that are embedded in a small town's main street, but for the most part, I don't like the majority of my activity to be right in the heart of town. Even if I do put industries in a small town, I will situate them off to one side so that it is clearly separated. So what do I put as the central focus of my railroad? The trains, of course. I love building scenes and scenery around my trains, whether it's a mountain pass or an industrial park. These are the things that are a ton of fun to model because they are going to see the most action. We tend to try and model town scenes a lot, and that is okay. But that is also because for a lot of us, that is where our main interaction with trains in the real world is, at a railroad crossing in downtown or an overpass. So we may put a lot of focus on those scenes, when in reality, a locomotive is going to spend a lot of its life away from these areas. It could be in a yard or at various industries, or it's going to be traveling between destinations. That is where I put these types of scenes, in the in-between areas. That brings us to my next must have, industries. I love doing switching operations and that you need a place to switch if you're doing switching operations. I kind of follow the rules of twos and threes when it comes to industries. I, If the industries are not big, I will cluster them together in arrangements of two or three. I typically think that four to five industries is a good amount for a layout. The exception to this, of course, is if you're modeling a large industry, such as a large coal mine or some sort of plant like a steel facility. Some small industries include things like cement distributors, warehouses, and other distribution type locations that specialize in the movement of a product rather than its production. Large industries can include things like chemical plants, mines, quarries, and other places that involve the extraction or production of materials and goods. 
So these are my main focuses for a model railroad when I am designing it. But I want to hear what you guys like to have on a model railroad because I'm in no way saying that any of this is right. So put what you must have on your model railroad in the comments below. I would absolutely love to hear that. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading.